daddy's in timeout because he did something wrong. Everybody here is in timeout because they didn't follow the rule. That's why. Hi everybody, this is Ro. Welcome back to my channel. So first of all, I have the ceiling fan on and hopefully I'll be able to edit that noise out. Hopefully you can't hear anything, but the air conditioner is broken and it is 90 something degrees out. So I have headphones in and hopefully we're good. If you can hear it and I can't edit it, I apologize. We'll be back to normal ASAP. Today, I wanted to talk to you about a topic that has come up as a repetitive theme throughout the last few weeks. I touched on this in a video I did a while ago about if you should read articles and media and look at all of the stuff that comes out about your loved ones. But I didn't go quite in depth into if you should tell your kids, what happens if you don't tell your kids, and my thoughts and experiences on just that. Now, I don't have children, but I do work with a lot of women who do, and I've spoken to a lot of them. And so I know some people struggle with if and when they should tell their children, and depending on the age and depending on how long daddy's away for. And I think, unfortunately, in our day and age, cell phones are a huge factor in children's lives. So. I think that if you have a child who's school age, and I don't mean high school or junior high, I mean school age. I mean, if they are in elementary school, kids have cell phones, kids have older siblings who have cell phones, and they're gonna know. And so I personally would suggest beating the older kids or beating the cell phone to the punch and having that conversation with your kid. This way you can control the conversation. You could be the one that breaks the news. You can be the one that answers their questions. They don't have to hear it from another kid. Be shocked, be confused, be angry at their father, but also at you for not telling them or lying to them or whatever you're doing. However, they in their little minds perceive it because these older kids or other kids at school have told them or they found it online or you might talk to them couple years down the road because it comes up and they said mom I've known for years I just wish you told me earlier that kind of a thing I'm gonna tell you right now if you have kids who are of school age they're going to know they're gonna know and the other thing is you might want to beat it to the punch and you might want to tell their teachers and you might want to tell their coaches and you might want to tell the people who are around them caring for them when you're not around. So they can tell you about behavioral changes. They could tell you about issues. They could tell you about times that they act out and they could also know when those things are happening. I have a friend who works with a nonprofit that is actually trying to get paperwork inserted in every child's file when they have a loved one who's arrested. So this way the schools and the school therapists can be notified and they can work through the emotions and the issues with the child. So me personally, I can't tell you what to do with your children. I can't tell you what is right and wrong for you. You have to do what's right for you. But I think that if you think that you're protecting your children by not telling them, my thought is, are you protecting your children by not telling them or are you protecting yourself from having to have that difficult conversation? Just soul search and ask yourself, what is the reason, truly the reason why I'm not telling them? What would be the worst thing that would happen if or when they find out and it's not for me? What's the best thing that could happen by me withholding this information from them? And then just work through it with yourself, work through it with your husband. There's ways that you can go about telling them, even when the kids are little, that you can explain that daddy did something wrong and he's in a timeout for grownups. And this is why we don't do things that are wrong. There's ways that you can go about doing this and you don't have to get into detail of the crime if God forbid it's violent and I'm not judging, so is ours, or at least it's on paper. And you don't have to tell them anything that isn't age appropriate for them. And you don't have to tell them at all if you don't want to, but if your kid is in school, school starts at kindergarten. If your kid's in school, eventually somebody will find out and eventually somebody will tell them. So you probably want 
to be the person that tells them. And we can go through ways that you can talk through it with your children, but I think that it's really beneficial for you to broach that topic with a child and for you to be the one that tells them where their father is or where their mother is. If you're the grandparent, where their parents are or their siblings are if they're younger and there's a span of years in between, I wouldn't withhold that information from them. I genuinely don't think that that's the best plan of action. So for you beautiful ladies and gentlemen who are new at this or you're questioning or you've been wanting to tell your child but you don't know how or you've been hiding it from them and you've been living in anxiety or denial every day because a lot of people might say, well, they'll just never find out. They'll be fine. They'll be, they'll be fine. It's fine. But really, you're just waiting for a shoe to drop. You're waiting for somebody at school to let them know. You're waiting for them to be in a position where they're bullied, especially your younger elementary age kids. You're just waiting. Cell phones are at the fingertips of everybody now. Older siblings love to tease younger siblings. Parents love to gossip with one another. My mom used to have this saying all the time, and she would say, there are big ears in little places. In other words, kids listen to everything. So there might be two PTO moms that are gossiping because they heard about this, they read it on the news, they saw it, they read an article, who knows? It came out, somebody Googled it, somebody was being nosy and they never intended for the children to be there or they didn't care and the kid heard. And then they went and they told the other kids at school and everybody started teasing your kid, but he didn't know why. They didn't come out and say it, or they started making childish, passive aggressive comments or jokes, and the teacher doesn't know, so she has no idea how to help. You have to really, really think these things through and figure out why you're withholding that information and who it's really benefiting. Hey loves, I'm sorry about the lighting in here, and I hope you can't hear my air fryer in the background, but I wanted to come in and do a little bit more of an explanation for this video before I edit and post it. So bear with me on this one. I, and now the washing machine is going because it's gonna be like that today. I just wanted to come in with a story because that other video was kind of short and it was kind of abrupt. And I thought about it driving home from work today. There was this little girl that I will never forget when I was waiting to be processed into visit a couple of years ago and they had couches very similar to this couch i mean obviously it wasn't wicker and it didn't have floral pillows but a long couch where we can sit they have couches and they have chairs throughout the processing room and this little girl was sitting next to me and her mother was sitting next to her and she taps the little girl taps me on the shoulder and she says she whispers because she knew she was gonna get in trouble from her mom she's the cutest little thing and she whispers and she said are you visiting your daddy too? She was so cute. She's probably about four years old, melted my heart. She was a doll face, wise beyond her years, that one. And I said, no, I'm visiting my husband. And she said, is he in timeout too? What did he do? She was whispering because her mother said, hey, you don't talk to people and ask them that stuff. Come back over here. And I looked at her mom and I said, no, she's fine. And the mother looked at me and she said, Daddy's in timeout because he did something wrong. Everybody here is in timeout because they didn't follow the rules. That's why we follow the rules. And she turned this whole awful situation into this beautiful lesson, this beautiful age appropriate lesson for her little girl. And she was doing something wrong and her mother was telling her, when you do something wrong, what happens? She says, I go into timeout. Well, that's what happens to grown-ups When they do something wrong, they have to go into grown-up timeout when they do something very wrong, when it's very serious. So I thought that was beautiful. And I wanted to pass that along to you because I don't think it has to be daddy's in prison because he did X, Y, and Z. I think you can make your story age appropriate. I pulled our members on Invisible Shackles today to see if anybody had a child who found out through school or another way other than them. And one of our girls wrote back and she said, when I was young, I was adopted and I found out much later that my mother or my parents, I don't remember, were in jail and I was being lied to. 
and it really, really stung. So I know I am not in any way pressuring you or telling you what you should do for your children because every situation is different and nobody should ever tell you how to parent. Nobody should ever comment on your parenting. What I'm trying to do instead is to open your eyes to things that maybe you didn't think of or see. You're the one that has to console your crying baby. You're the one that has to wake up with them at night. But from a flip perspective, I just want you to remember when they're in school, people talk and things get found out, it's gonna be a different kind of consoling and it's gonna be a different kind of waking up at night. And we want to break this pipeline. We don't want to make it in any way, shape or form enticing to kids and we just have to be careful in how we are approaching it and that's all but I respect you and I love you no matter what decision you choose because only you know what's best for you and only you know what is best for your child. Hey guys! Ro asked me to give my opinion about the whole thing and whether to have the talk with your children or not. This is a subject matter that haunts me every day every day because my bonus kids are young adults now. They're 23 and 20. I don't know if they know that their father is a level one sex offender. I've tried to have the conversation. It kind of gets a little, so I just let it go. But I mean, they're they're starting their futures. I mean, one wants to become a doctor, the other one's serving as a, as a sergeant in the Marines. And I, I worry because he's in the paper. The charge is in the paper. The whole thing is in the paper. They're, four, they're not huge articles, but there's four small articles that have his name in it and the whole nine yards. And it scares me because we always talk about the body keeps score and it always wins. And I don't know if any of that stuff is going to fester up and cause any problems later on in their lives. And it makes me nervous. Personally, I mean, if I had children, yes, I would tell them. Uh, but I don't have children. I don't have the right to talk to them about it. I mean, by all means, if they came to me and started to talk to me about it, I would definitely be there in a second and talk about it and discuss it. Yes, I would tell them for sure. It makes me very, very, very nervous because you never know. You just never know. I'm just grateful it wasn't in the news. It wasn't on TV because that could have been a whole other issue. It was bad, but it could have gotten worse. This is something I contemplate in my head all the time. Like today, here's a perfect example. My bonus son is taking his MCATs in an hour and a half and he's under all this pressure and what if he snaps? I don't dwell on it, but I worry. I definitely, definitely worry and it makes me, it makes me nervous. So personally, yeah, I would discuss it. I would talk about it. I would get it out there. I know that they had counseling when this first happened. It was court mandated. Their mom stopped because, you know, she felt like she was being criticized. I think there were some subject matters that she didn't want to discuss, but I wanted to just get my opinion in there because, you know, I love my role. I worry about it, so it's a problem. And I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great day. So I hope this helps just kind of shed some light. I was asked to make this video by three or four separate people. I am not here just giving my unsolicited advice. I'm giving advice that I was asked to give. So if, if it doesn't resonate with you, totally fine. Click off and watch the next one. And what I do hope is that it helps get your wheel spinning and helps you build momentum and figure out the best way to handle this because there is no right or wrong way, but maybe there's a best way or a better way. I love you guys. I will be back in the next one. Keep staying strong. Keep loving strong. Keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to it all being behind you. Lots of love from my heart to yours. I will see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next one.